Um, hi, everybody. My name is Bob Bushbacker, and I'm involved in uh, developing a new program here at ULF related to governance and infrastructure in the Amazon. And there are three kinds of people in the world. There are people who are academics, there are people who work for NGOs, and then there are real people who are actors or stakeholders or people that are actually in these systems. And so I'm kind of a hybrid between NGO and academic person. And kind of what we're gonna talk about today is how NGOs and academics can have an influence on the other actors in the system. And so, and what I'm gonna do, you guys wanna introduce yourself some more or you want to talk or? But I, I should just say that, that this is something that Wendy and Carol and I have been working on for about 10 years. And we're, this, we're gonna start by kind of reminding you a little bit about a little bit of legacy of the TCD program, working on uh, learning and dialogue to strengthen governance and resilience. And we're not gonna actually talk about governance specifically until the end. We're trying to try and bring it back to governance. What we're really gonna talk about is our experience with capacity building programs and leadership development. Um, and we've been working with an alum, Denise Mello and Simone, who leads the Amazon Dam Network. Uh, she's also an alum. So it's kind of this group and probably many more people. We have some of the kind of the participants in our programs include Thaisa, who's applying what she learned at TCD and including in our capacity building programs. Ellen Agee is kind of a key element, member of our initial group. So, and let me just talk a little bit about uh, some of the work that we have done. Okay, I was actually gonna start with a little bit of a, uh, and, and like I said, at the end, I wanna try and bring this back to governance and to the broader question of how social ecological systems change. And one of the things I want to kind of argue for is that unexpected changes can happen and that Sometimes like a small little effort can have a big impact. And so I just want to give you something I think is kind of an example of that. So there was this little thing that Greenpeace did. They, they uh, surveyed their members and they had about 30,000 people respond, asking them to vote who should get the golden chainsaw as the person most responsible for deforestation in the Amazon. And the governor of Mato Grosso, who was actually in this land sparing complex he's the he's the soybean king and also the governor and has also now he's a senator and he has previously the think been minister of agriculture okay so that was just kind of like a little thing that they did he was governor about 10 years ago i think okay but it actually had a huge impact if you look at uh how governor maji responded to this First of all, he was very affected personally. Like this made a big, had a huge media repercussion, even though it doesn't look like it there. Had a huge media repercussion. He was swamped with messages. His daughter was harassed in school. Uh, and he actually responded in, in several ways. He changed the environmental secretary. He, he, we know it's very important. Uh, he <laughs> increased the management of his personal property. So he owns a lot of ranches. He, uh, he actually, we have a, PhD student who graduated from here who did research because he, he set up a research station on, on one of his farms. He opened dialogue with scientists and NGOs like ICV, who we're going to hear about later, and Dan Nefstadt. Uh, he participated in the Conference of the Parties. He supported RED, etc. cetera. Uh, so actually, the little action had a huge impact, had a huge effect. Now, I also would say that, of course, it didn't change the underlying system. So in, in a way, it's actually, it's a very good example of what resilience is, because the system changed. It kind of had a collapse and a reorganization. He went into a different mode, but he maintained his capitalism, intensive agriculture approach, etc., and, and continued to protect it. In fact, I was actually kind of tagged along with Dan Nepstad at one of his meetings with the governor, and the governor gave us like an hour, and was very intelligent and engaged. And of course, then as you leave the meeting, there's a photographer there and it goes on his website, Governor Maji meets with important international scientists. But again, at the end of the day. So in a way, it has a huge 
unexpected impact. Um, and so another example is kind of bringing us into our program now of a tipping point is a little course that we did in 2009. It's a, it's a 12 day course. And, you know, we just kind of, of course there had been a lot of, in some ways preparation of it, but it was just meant as like a, a course and with, you know, beginning, middle and end. At the end of the course, you know, we didn't have any pretensions of what to do afterwards. But actually, a lot of things happened as a result of this course. So this group kind of self-emerged, self-organized, it emerged from this experience, and it went on to do a lot of things, which I'll explain to you a little bit. Representing that poster in a second. Just let me point out that here's Thaisa, here's Wendy, here's Simone, here's yeah. Ellie Neji, uh, Renato Farias. Uh, has been a UF partner. He's the Sec State Secretary of the Environment right now. Uh, Paula Paul Paul Bernasconi. Paula Paul Bernasconi is there. Yeah. The left. Amentas has been here at UF a couple of times. So a lot of things happened as a result of this. We did a specialization. Sorry. Is an, is an important indigenous leader right now? Yeah. Okay. And working with Simone, you know? Okay. So a lot of things happened. Um, basically, I think Wendy's gonna talk about a specialization course that was kind of the next step. Uh, a whole bunch of other courses came out. Uh, the research network, actually, I guess I should show you this poster here, which I think is here as well. Just This is just kind of a timeline of our work with capacity building. And it has a long, deep roots in the TCD program. So, you know, going back to the Merge Project, um, UF's work with UFAC, uh, a, an integrated graduate education research traineeship program, a working force in the tropics uh, that uh, kind of brought the TCD approach to a cohort of PhD students. And then we built on that to develop we got a grant from the Moore Foundation to start a program aimed at people from the Amazon region. We, some, we brought some of them up as uh, PhD and master's students here at UF, people that had been uh, from the Amazon region, from all the Amazonian countries. But we also put it together a program for people to visit, like a couple of those people that were in that course came for semesters, sabbaticals, at UF, these are professionals who came not because they couldn't leave. Johnny Ice and Simone were also in that. And so some of them developed that into coming back for a PhD program. That was not the intent. They're just supposed to go back there and be better professionals. <laughs> uh, Simone was not supposed to migrate to the United States. Uh, but these are unanticipated effects. Uh, we also, UF had been working a long time with the Federal University of Agre. And we had in this program some efforts to strengthen their graduate programs, kind of to help them be more interdisciplinary. Um, we had a lot of challenges in doing that, but we did kind of do some work with the Federal University of Mato Grosso. We helped them develop a, a master's, well, Theodore did a lot of different things with that, but a master's program in environmental law and so on. And then we, we brought in around 2008 when that Sementius group got together. And we brought together, we had actually done a workshop in Manaus, which is where I met Ellie Neji and Walter Lina and Amintas, I think. And, and so they decided to come like, like two or three years later to this mini course that we did. And Wendy joined and she brought in a lot of the tools and approaches from the Natural Resources Leadership Initiative, which we this, the John Dane leads right now, and so a lot of kind of the John Dane kinds of approaches bring into working with this group. And from that one course, then we did the specialization course, which Mike is going to talk about, and that kind of strengthened that group and brought in some other people. And then spinning off from that, one of the groups uh, that Ellen Agee and Simone are leading is the Amazon Dams Network, so that's a research group. Uh, after we did that course, some of the NGOs who participated, including Carol's NGO, ICB, 
they asked us to do another course with the staff of these two NGOs. And out of that emerged a program that they're leading and implementing on resilient family agriculture, a, a research program. There are some UF linkages to that, uh, but that was a continuing program that, of course, emerged out of all that they had been doing in the past, but they kind of brought in some methodologies, including the, the focus on resilience, and we helped them kind of advance that agenda, and they're, it's, it's a big, important program right now. And then we started working with a network of Brazilian NGOs called RECOM that were working on governance issues. We did a course with them, a multi-modular core field-based course that included a module at the ICV. And then, and then one of the things that we uh, realized in this experience the, the, that we had this kind of multi-stakeholder group in a course was that the analysis that we were doing of resilience served as a way to kind of have a dialogue between people with different perspectives. So in the first course that uh, Eli Neji did, we had somebody that was uh, from the logging association, we had an indigenous person, we had some local people, as well as the two other kinds of people in the world, the academics and the NGOs. Um, and so this is just kind of a Kind of sequence of some of the courses, and I'm going to use this as a transition to Carol. Um, we did this specialization course, which was four modules, and, and we continued to mix people from government, academia, NGOs, and the local community. Then we did a couple of courses specifically aimed at professionals from NGOs or from a network of NGOs. These were also modular courses. And we also kind of used the methodology of trying to understand the system that you're in as a way of promoting dialogue directly with community members. So these two courses, and Carol is gonna talk about these now, were like more like workshops with community leaders to, to just kind of facilitate a dialogue among themselves and to give them some skills to uh, hopefully increase the governance of these systems in the future. So, Week. I'm on schedule, and that's pretty much what I wanted to kind of do, recapitulate that legacy, and go, like it, that one particular experience kind of exploded, but it, because of it had roots and preparation. Um, and so now Carol is going to talk about this kind of approach of dialogue directly with communities. And then Wendy will talk about some of the courses with professionals and the methodologies that we're using. Um, and then I will come back later to kind of bring this up more theoretically to the concept of governance.